you know, our, our whole thing is simplicity, right? It's all about making the system super, super easy to use. Um, and, you know, as you guys know, running a virtualized infrastructure, especially one with high availability and live migration and all those things is not a simple system. So making that highly complex environment simple takes a lot of technology, and that's what we have. Um, so there are five key components to making this easy. Um, one is the browser-based UI. You guys saw that. I'm not going to go deep into that. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's new technology. It's HTML5. It's uh, uh, Node.js. It's super fast. It's uh, very responsive. It's kind of a, a joy to work in inside uh, your environment. Um, but it, so the other four things that we think are required um, are a fully integrated Linux cluster, KVM, our, our scale D automation system, and our scribe storage. So um, we kind of think these are our actual requirements to deliver the solution that we're trying to deliver to our customers. Um, so one of the things, this isn't something we go out and tell our customers. We don't say, hey, you're, you need to buy a cloud for your, your internal infrastructure. It's our kind of way of thinking about what the experience of the user should be. The experience of the user should be, I log in with the web browser, I spin up VMs, I shut down VMs, I move things around, the infrastructure takes care of itself, and we're done. That's the cloud-like experience that we're trying to deliver to our customers. So from internal perspective, as in product management and engineering, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm just going to go through, talk a little bit about each one of these things, and then we'll do a deep dive on the storage layer. So, you know, why do we need a fully integrated cluster? Why not piecemeal things together? Um, the number one thing, in my opinion, is that we do fully integrated and tested upgrades. So when you get a new version of scale, you get new scribe, you get new KVM, you get a new Linux kernel, you might get new hardware drivers all across the board. But those have been tested as a unit by us extensively. Our automated test suite is about 24 hours. Um, we run thousands on thousands and thousands of tests against every release. And being able to do that against the environment all put together, and you don't have to worry about this version of VMware working with that version of your SAN, working with this version of um, whatever, your firmware, and then vendors all pointing to each other going, no, it's that guy's fault, um, in a little circle. We're the one-stop shop, so we test it. We know it works before we even ship it to our customers. Um, it also lets us do the automation that's, that you need to do to make this thing easy. Um, we automate everything from the hardware all the way to the UI. Everything in between, we're, we are fully in control of the stack. Um, we get deployments. We get fixes out, enhancements out. You know, when things come out of uh, the KVM community, whether they're bug fixes, security patches, whatever, we can easily get those in and get those out to our customers very, very quickly. We don't have to wait on a third-party vendor to do the work. Um, and we've even patched KVM ourselves to, to fix particular things to get those things out very, very quickly. Um, we can do, we can make trade-offs between stability and cutting edge features. Um, you know, if, if we have, there's a feature that our customers really, really want, and it's cutting edge, and it might not be quite as stable as the rest of the stuff, but we can make those trade-offs. We can make those decisions. And it limits stack bloat. We don't have to install everything, just what we need. So KVM, this is a big one. Um, when, you, when you go through the list of our requirements, KVM is the only one that fits. Um, you could maybe say Zen, uh, KVM is a better hypervisor, so we went with that. But first of all, we didn't want it to be a VSA. Um, so that VMware is out the window right off the gate, right? Because that's the only way to build hyperconvergence inside of VMware, unless you're VMware and you get to write vSAM. Um, and we needed to own the whole stack. It's based on a Linux kernel. Um, it works great, it's fast, it's solid. Um, and we wanted it to be open source so that, again, we could own the whole stack. We could make fixes, make adjustments, change things as we needed to to make the right solution for our customers. So this is where we started to get into our technology. Um, so if you think about 
the concept of shipping a Linux cluster to the mid-market, right? To customers who are essentially Windows admins, many of which won't touch a command line. Um, you start to think, oh, you guys are crazy, right? <laughs> um, and the clusters are complex, they're hard to manage. Um, the troubleshooting can be challenging. It can be difficult to figure out what the problems are. Um, and so what we've done is built technology that allows a cluster to be easy, as easy to manage as a single server. Um, it's cluster aware, and this is really our foundation for deploying clusters in the wild. We have thousands of customers. Um, we have eight support people. So these guys are, and, and we're essentially second tier infrastructure support for our customers, right? If something breaks, you know, they're on the GUI. If something breaks, they call us, we fix it. Um, and it's, it's been around for a while. The scale D automation came when we were shipping uh, storage, our storage product. So we've got a lot of experience. Um, so this is kind of the key piece of technology here. Um, we built a, a state machine system that allows us to easily automate day-to-day -day management tasks, automate recovery tasks during failure scenarios. And so the state machines make decisions, they perform actions, they fix the cluster when the cluster breaks. So my favorite story about this is this happens every single day. Something breaks, the cluster alerts the customer, customer calls support. By the time support logs into the system, it's fixed itself. Every day that happens. And you can imagine the customer experience for that, right? Oh, there's something wrong, call support. Support gets on there and goes, no, it's fixed. The cluster fixed itself. It's, it's. So your support people just talk with them for a little bit. Yeah, you know, and say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and usually they want, you know, kind of a root cause analysis. What happened? Why did it happen? Those kinds of things. And, and the back end of this thing, which I'll talk about in a second, does a really good job of making that easy for them to, to explain to the customer what happened. But the key here is over the last seven years, six years of shipping Linux clusters into the wild, into customer environments. We have developed a core of knowledge of managing these things and making, fixing problems and finding out what goes wrong. And what we were able to do, what the state machine system allows us to do is encode that knowledge in the structure of the state machine. So um, actually, I'll tell a little story about that in a second. So the other thing is, so it just continues to improve as time goes on. Right? As soon as the next time we hit a new customer issue or you know, we've hit this customer issue a few times, we go, okay, well, can we, can we build a state machine that will fix this problem on the fly? Yes? Okay, done. And we build it and it goes out to customers in the next update. But to make the state machine work, we need a set of trusted inputs. The state machine can't make decisions with bad data. Right? So there's a second layer. Um, of data collection and data management that feeds the state machine to make sure that 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 the decisions it's making is it's making with data that it knows works. So we have collectors at the bottom that just go out and pull information from the system all across the cluster. Uh, you know things like heat, things like uh, st capacities, things like um, memory usage, those kinds of things. Uh, whether the disk is working or not, those everything. Um, that feeds up into a check value system. So the check values are essentially variables that have limits. So the most important one being time. So if you, um, you know, if you want to make a decision about the memory utilization, you need to know that the data that you have is fairly recent. Um, if it's three hours old, that's no good. So the check values keep track of how long it's been since the data has been updated and let us know if it's out of date. And then if you're out of date, then you, you don't make decisions. You don't make changes. Yeah, you can think of it as storing metadata about these values that it's collecting. So, right. Yeah. Um, and then it goes into conditions. Conditions are, are Boolean values, yes or no. Is something wrong or not? Um, and, and there's thousands of conditions. And the first thing the support guys do, so one of the things that if you saw on the user interface, it pops up alerts. When a condition gets set, it says, hey, this is wrong. Um, and so that feeds the UI. 
Um, when the support guys get on to the box, the first thing they do is show me all the set conditions. Show me everything that the system thinks is wrong. So one of my favorite stories about this is when we first start shipping these things, clusters are very sensitive to time differential. The time has to be synced across the cluster. Well, when the time isn't synced, it's not a super obvious thing. It just you start getting weird problems, not like, oh my god, oh the time's out of sync, right? So you spend like an hour and then you finally you think to check the time and go, oh, that was it. Well, so first step was we'll we'll make a condition for when the time gets out of sync. So then support guys get on there, oh, immediately know the time's out of sync, fix it, no problem. Next step was, well, let's make a state machine that automatically corrects when time's out of sync. So that's what happens now. So now we don't get support calls about time being out of sync anymore. The cluster just fixes it. Um, it's, it's, just, it's funny, too, because I, I know like, some people might be thinking, we'll just run NTP on these machines, keep them in sync. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, you, you might think that, but it's, like, it's, it's actually fairly complex. And, and so NTP probably, fails a, a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's really, especially once you get thousands of these clusters in the field, and it's like, why isn't this working the way it should? Okay, well, that's why we have this system. Is that right. these sort of issues that pop up when, okay, something is not working exactly as it should. We don't know why, but we have a system that can correct those sorts of issues. So all this data feeds into the state machines, helps us make those decisions. It feeds into the alert manager, which sends out emails, syslog, and it feeds the UI. When, when you add another node to the cluster, does it automatically add more collectors? Um, well, each node has its own set of collectors. So there's, um, each node is responsible for collecting all the data for it, that node. Um, and there are a few that are kind of clustered like this time sync where you have to talk to the other clusters and ask them what time it is. Um, but then, but yes, um, we, we actually add a whole bunch of new check values for each node and a whole bunch of conditions for each node that are node specific. And that all happens, obviously, it's easy behind the scenes. Like adding and deleting nodes is all online operations. So I like to say ScaleD is our secret sauce, right? Like I said, we have thousands of clusters in the field. We have eight support engineers. Um, and we have a support, like support net promoter score of 82. So is that good? That's very good. It's very, very good. So <laughs> what you consider world class about 40 to really? 50. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So 82 is, is killing it. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're really proud of that. And, and the net promoter score, I don't know what off the top of my head, for the product is very good as well. But basically, you know, these guys are, you know, handling support for all these customers and doing a fantastic job because the system just works. It just runs. Does your stuff call home? Is there any? No. So the, the way that works is when the customer decides that they need help, um, they can initiate the cluster to contact us, and then we can get on the cluster that way. Okay. Um, but it, there's no automated phone home kind of system. 